Hey, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com and here we've got the brand new 6D camera. Uh, taking a look at this camera, it feels pretty good in the hand. Uh, feels like a little bit better than the Canon 60D. Not quite as good as the 7D or the 5D Mark III, but it's still a very solid feel. I have no concerns about the build quality of this camera. Everything just, just fits good in the hand and feels great to the touch. So as we take a look around the, the device, though, we'll take a look at some of the ports. You will see a microphone in. No headphone in jack though, unfortunately. Uh, we're missing a couple of jacks, that's because this has Wi-Fi and GPS built in, so we don't really need any other add-ons for that. Uh, around the front of the camera, this is going to be plastic around the front of the camera. The rest of it's going to be a magnesium alloy shell, but it still feels good. We have a depth of field button right down here. I will say the depth of field button is very tough to press. It's very difficult to get to, uh, almost impossible with your right hand. You'd have to use your left hand while holding the lens to get to it. Not a big fan of that. The grip feels good. We do not have any, of, uh, any extra buttons around here like we do on the Canon 5D Mark III. So whatever buttons you have on here, we don't have any additional programmable buttons other than the depth of field button, which can be changed for a couple things, and the set button. Um, up on the top, we will see a bunch of the normal controls. Notice no white balance button like we have on many of the other cameras. Therefore, we have no way of actually setting the white balance on there. The set button around the back can also not be programmed in order to, to do that. So you have no ability to have any white balance control other than going through the Q menu for that. The ISO button is right in the middle. It's very easy to press. That makes it much easier to get to. It's a little bit raised and has a dot in there, which I do like a lot. Now, on the right side of the camera, we do have only a single SD card slot. You know, I really wish Canon had chosen to go with a dual SD card slot like Nikon has done for both the D600 and the D7000, which is a pretty old camera. Canon does it in the 5D Mark III. We're not sure what they'll do in a new 7D, but I really wish they had done it. It's great for overflow, great to keep video and, and pictures on, the, on separate cards, or if you are shooting something really important, you can have basically mirrored files on both of those cards and that's just an added element of safety just in case one of those cards get lost or goes bad I really wish that they had done that now on the back we do have a 3 inch screen not the 3.2 inch that they've been putting in the 5D Mark II or Mark III and so not quite as good as you'll get in the Nikon on that but it's still a good size screen still has a great orientation the actual orientation of the pictures so it makes pretty good for viewing everything is bright uh, and works very well. The controls are a little bit more like the 7D, also the 5D Mark III with controlling your video. And so we're seeing a lot of those elements come back from what we're used to in some of their newer cameras. Now the lock button on top comes back. It's, uh, it's actually a little bit easier to press the entire mode dial, switches much easier. I find that the 5D Mark III has uh, basically the mode dial click, feels about the same as the 5D Mark II without the lock dial. But since we have the lock dial, we don't really need it to be quite as difficult to press because you're not going to accidentally be able to press it with the lock dial on there. So now when we take a look at the menus, overall when you turn on the camera and take a look at the menus, the menus are uh, a little bit daunting. There's a lot of different options and they're all presented to you all in one place. Uh, a lot more complicated looking than the 5D Mark III because we have so many columns on that. Some of those columns also only have probably two menu items on there, so I feel like Canon could have combined a couple of them and made it a little more simple looking. Also, we do have lens calibration controls. That's great. Uh, we didn't expect to see it on some of the, some of the cheaper Canons, like the Canon 6D did not have that, so I'm glad to see it in, in this one, in the 6D. Uh, also, we do have plenty of magnification options like we do on the 5D Mark III. Glad to see those there as well. Uh, no file naming, so no custom file naming. This is a problem for me if I'm shooting with multiple of the same cameras to give me the ability to, to basically have a different naming procedure for each of those cameras on there so we don't mix up the file numbers. Uh, also, I'm glad to see that the auto white or auto exposure bracketing is going to be just like the, seven, the 5D Mark III where we have up to seven different auto exposure brackets that we can do on that. Now if you're shooting HDR that's great. If you're shooting HDR in camera you will be limited to three but if you're doing it in any other software you can get up to seven. That's great to see on a camera such as this. Uh, the Wi-Fi and GPS also included in this. The Wi-Fi I did find very useful 
I was able to pretty easily control the camera, all of the functions, see a live preview of what was going on on the camera. I do see a lot of use for that. I'm glad they did include that on this. We can do it on all the other cameras, but we need a module to hook onto it. So it's nice to have it built in. Uh, it's off by default. Now the app itself, is a, a little bit rudimentary to use. It feels like a first generation, so hopefully they can do some improvements on that to get that going a little bit better. And, uh, but overall, it functions, it works well. Now, GPS, I'm not as big of a fan on. I, I don't geotag my images all the time, and so it's off by default. Also, you're not gonna get a great target GPS signal on uh, indoors when you're inside of some locations, so it's mostly better if you're outside. And also be careful because you might be tagging locations that you don't want tagged. That information is going to be inserted into the metadata of every image that you take that has that in it. So you would have to remove it if you ever wanted to not give that information away. So overall GPS is going to use up some additional battery life too. So uh, not a great thing on that one. I keep it disabled most of the time. Now we don't have any flash on this camera. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Not so surprised on cameras like the 5D Mark III, but we do see the flash on the Nikon D600. And we do see flash on the 7D and other cameras in this kind of price bracket or in this kind of bracket of where they're, where they're led to as far as who's the target audience for this camera. There are some uses for it. You can trigger off camera flash, it can help you focus, and sometimes in a pinch it's better to have that than nothing. This is also kind of a small and light camera, so it, it's not a camera that you'd want to travel around with an off-camera lighting setup. So it would be nice to see that in there. Now, the focus modes. The focus modes are a little more confusing even than the 5D Mark III. You don't have any of the presets, so you're left to try to figure out what all of these controls are and how to adjust them. I'm glad to see we have the controls, it's just a little more difficult to navigate if you're not used to these new focus systems in the Canon and some of the controls that they give you. Now 11 points, they're all in the center unfortunately. Had a hard time getting anything further away from the center. You're going to be focusing and recomposing almost every shot if you're trying to take anything off center on this camera. Only one is going to be a cross type focus point. That's a big thing for me. Uh, I didn't find that the other focus points worked nearly as well if I was in a dark environment or taking some, some kind of basically solid fabrics or something like that. I was not able to get a good shot with anything other than the center focus point. So I wish that they had uh, given me something a little bit better on that. And also, uh, it just overall was not on track with cameras like the 7D and uh, especially the 5D Mark III. I really felt like I was using more of the D, uh, 60D focus system or something along those lines with this camera. Now, I did find it difficult to change those focus points also because we do not have the jog wheel that we do on the 5D Mark III and 7D. So you're left with a D-pad that's a little bit more similar to what we're seeing out of the Canon uh, single digit or the double digit series like the 60D and the, and the T3Is and the things like that. So that's it for the basic walk around of the camera and let's take a look at some of the results.